Live na po tayo. Show, 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 Salamat. Oh, searchable ngayon ko lang nakita yung search ano pala. Yeah, okay, <laughs> there is. Oh, kasi browse ko pa all throughout. I'll stop sharing first. Okay po, good morning po sa inyong lahat. So welcome po sa ating uh, PIF webinar for the Philippine Science Hub. So I'm Joan Aguila. I will be your moderator for today. So before we start off with the lecture proper, let me discuss with you some house rules. So first off, as with our previous webinars, please uh, make sure to mute your device's microphone. Also to keep your cameras turned off. I know you'll have a lot of questions, but please reserve them and ask them at the end of the presentation. Pwede po siyang live nyo i-ask. Or you can send your questions through the uh, Zoom chat box or even in the comment section in the uh, YouTube live. Also, we refrain you from recording the lecture using your devices. We will have a 30 minutes Q&A portion after the lecture. So we will allot time for you to ask questions to our speaker. And please take note, certificates will only be issued to Zoom and YouTube participants who are also Fieldside Fab followers. So we strongly encourage you to follow us in YouTube as well, not only in the Facebook page. So a Google form, the link for that will be posted on Zoom chat box and YouTube live comment section. So after the Q&A, we will post the link in both the chat box and the comment section. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot share the slides of the speaker but rest assured, we will be sharing a web lecture video in our YouTube channel as well as in our Facebook page. So before we go to the lecture, uh, we would like to introduce again our organization. So I will call on John Marty Mateo to introduce the Philippine Science Hub. Great. Uh, thank you, Mom. Uh... Joan. Uh, again, my name is Marty. 
So, introduce ko lang po sa inyo, mga teachers, and sa other participants kung uh, yung Filipino Science Hub. Yung Filipino Science Hub po is formerly known as the Batanga City Science Hub. And this was founded by our uh, very own Dr. Jeff Bunkin. And uh, medyo lumipas po yung oras. Uh, na-revive na lang po siya ulit ngayon uh, nung time ng pandemic. So, uh, Dr. Jeff Bunkin invited us. So, ako po, si Dr. Janice Avirilia, uh, JP Onya, uh, Professor Joan Aguila, and Professor Ralph Alumia to join him sa uh, passion niya and uh, sa pagmamoderate ng page na ito. And uh, we are working in three time zones. Si Dr. Bunkin po at saka si Dr. Avirilia ay nasa US. Si Kuya JP po ay nasa Finland at kaming tatlo naman po ay nasa Pilipinas. So ang aim ng page na ito is to really strengthen the STEM uh, track and program for the Filipinos. And sa, uh, ang unang target po talaga namin is mga teachers kasi naniniwala po kami na pa ang pagkapasitay po ng mga teachers will be will have a multiplier effect. So kapag po ma makatrain kami or maka uh, maka reach kami ng mga teachers, it will have a times 30 multiplier dahil po sa mga students na ma-reach nila. So uh, ang following po namin sa Facebook ay umabot na po sa 18,000 tapos kaka-launch din din po namin ng page namin. So mamaya po i-discuss yan ni Ma'am Daang. And we also have your, our YouTube channel. So kung nakamiss po kayo ng mga web lectures and webinars, naka-upload naman po yung lahat doon. Ayun lang po. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Marty. So as Marty said, we recently have our official Pilsai Hub website. So please check www.pilsaihub.com. So as you can see, you will find our le web lectures and tutorials, um, video copies of the webinars in the website. So please check on this. So with that, this is our official YouTube channel. So please uh, subscribe to this so you'll get updated on what is happening and what uh, current videos are being uploaded in the channel. And to continue on with our passion in educating uh, Filipino STEM teachers, so we have an upcoming event in coordination with the Kapisanang Kimika ng Pilipinas, Southern Tagalog Incorporated, as well as UPLB Institute of Chemistry. We will uh, present a webinar on strategies for transitioning to online teaching in the sciences. This will be given by Dr. Michelle Lansigan, who is a senior professorial lecturer at the American University in Washington, D.C. So please register through this link. So as shown, webinar online. And again, you need a Zoom account to be able to participate in the webinar. So for our talk today, we will once again have Professor Elmer Rico E. Mojica. So we have first met Professor Mojica when he gave a lecture about the five E's of teaching. And he is very passionate about teaching and in sharing his experience that he agreed on giving this another webinar. So a little bit more about Professor Mojica. Professor Mojica comes from uh, Sambuanga City. He got his uh, BS and MS Agricultural Chemistry degree at UPLB. And then he flew to New York and got his PhD in chemistry at the University of Buffalo in New York City. He also did a postdoctoral studies on, or rather at the City University, New York, Currently, he is a lecturer and an associate professor at the Department of Chemistry and Physical Sciences at Face University in New York City. Previously, he was a professor in Cavite State University and UPLB. 
Dr. Mohika specializes in analytical chemistry with a wide expertise in application of chromatography, spectroscopy, and electrochemistry in different fields like food science, nutrition, biochemistry, and environmental science. He is a very accomplished scientist. He had written over 70 publications in peer-reviewed journals and books and have several grants from various organizations, including the prestigious National Science Foundation of US. Dr. Hermohika is a recipient of various awards, including UPLB College of Sci Arts and Sciences Outstanding Junior Faculty in 2003, and Outstanding Teaching Assistant from the Department of Chemistry and the Graduate School while he is pursuing his PhD. So that is at the University of Buffalo. He also received the first excellent in research and scholarship award during Chase University Research Day. And uh, he was a recipient of the Ulirang Guru Award in the college level in the 2019 sponsored by the Association of Teachers of America and the 2020 Charles and Homer Face Teaching Award. Today, Professor Mohika will share about his experience about uh, teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's hear on from Dr. Mohika. Sir Mohika, please uh, take the stage and good evening at your end. Okay, so magandang araw po sa inyong lahat dyan sa Pilipinas. Uh, gabi po ngayon dito sa New York. So once again, I'm here in Phil Science Hub uh, just uh, as I promised uh, to share whatever uh, experience that I had during this uh, pandemic. Okay. So this is my fourth webinar for the week. So I tried to make it a little bit, uh, let's say, less serious because the last three seminars is serious to my uh, audience. Ko eh. okay? So as Daang said, I'm based here in the city, New York City. So Face University is a private non-sectarian university. We have two campuses. I'm based in New York City itself, although I used to teach in the suburb in Westchester every fall semester for environmental science course. But when I got promoted and tenured to associate professor, I just tell them I, I prefer to stay in the city. So this is where our school is. So uh, this is the view when you're standing on Brooklyn Bridge. So we are dwarfed by the most, uh, more famous uh, spiral building, the gallery building as we have here. And this is how our passage looks like. So this is in front, behind that is the city hall. So. When there were protests earlier uh, July, uh, June and earlier this month, there's a lot of pro uh, protesters in that area. And I have not been there since March uh, 10. Okay? So, okay. ano ba nangyari nung lockdown sa Pilipinas? Okay? So, karamihan nag-Netflix, the crash landing on you. My wife just watched it, I think, two weeks ago. Okay? Sumikat yung TikTok your TikTok, sumikat yung taong to, si Biko, at nagka-problema yung ABS-CBN. So, ganun din dito sa amin. May nangyari din at least sa akin. Okay? Uh, the first thing that I watched when we went to pandemic is the second season of Kingdom. And then I watched community series. And then I finished this, uh, what we call final season. Now, to keep my sanity during this pandemic, I also have to watch this, uh, what we call La Casa de Papel heist. And I was really uh, what we called uh, what, uh, with the tune of the song that they have. So I just like to show you, maybe you're familiar with this. In the Filipino version. Okay, so hahanapan ka ng ambag mo. So I, I, hindi ako nagre-reklamo, pero ito na lang ang ambag ko sa taong bayan dyan sa Pilipinas. 
Okay, bakit tayo nandito ngayon? Kasi gusto kong i-share yung naranasan ko nung pandemic. As Oscar Wilde say, experience is the hardest kind of teacher. It gives you the test first and then the lesson afterward. Also from Oscar Wilde, experience is one thing you can't get for nothing. So ano ba yung tinasabi kong experience? Okay? So when we ship the middle of the spring semester, I was teaching in two institutions. Okay? My mother unit, which is Pace University, and I have this course. Uh, General Chemistry 1 lecture, Tuesday, Thursday. General Chemistry 2 lab every Wednesday. And then Instrumental lab every Monday evening. Okay? And then during the summer, we just finished uh, last week, I, I, I taught Gen Chem 1 lecture and love. Now in the York College where I had uh, moonlight to augment my income, I, I, I uh, taught general chemistry to lecture every Saturday and instrumental methods every Friday. And then this summer, they asked me to do uh, instrumental methods. So yung spring, tatawag namin remote or distance learning. Pero yung uh, summer, online. Pero uh, meron akong maano dito sa notion natin na online teaching eh. Because that's not what we think it is. Okay? So, anong nangyari this year? So, 2020 is not really, we could say, a very good year. Okay? Pumutok yung taal nung January. May sunog sa wa uh, sa Australia noong, noong January, namatay si Kobe bago matapos yung January. Dito nagkagulo ang tao dahil sa tissue paper. Since film tayo, hindi tayo kasama doon kasi meron tayong tabo. Okay? Pero nung paman, masama na yung kutob namin dito. Okay? We always, uh, we have got uh, what we call uh, a, a, a bad feeling about this pandemic. Because we said, if it's going to hit here in the US, it's going to be worse. And unfortunately, Okay, nagkatotoo. Now, this is the number of cases in NYC. And we are proud to say we really plattened the curve. Di gaya ng DOH secretary, dyan na plattened na daw yung curve. Okay? But unfortunately, New York City lang. Okay? So, once upon a time, we said we got hit hard. Okay? And we are really affected until now. The number of cases that we have, at least here in the city, is 217,000. Mas mataas na number of cases dyan sa buong Pilipinas. Okay? And the confirmed deaths that we have is around 19,000. But right now, we're happy. And at the same time, sad. We're happy that we already flattened the curve, but sad because the other parts of the U.S. are going, out. So, uh, going up. So every day, it's always a record. Okay? Record in terms of the number of cases. So not in a good case. And the buzzword that we have since the start of this pandemic are, are, are what we could uh, summarize here. Okay? So we have their blended, vaccine, lockdown, lobster, como, pouchy. So those are the common words that we heard during this uh, what we called lockdown. So Ang nangyari sa amin, we, we went work from home. Okay? So, I, I, I'd like to show you here the, the email or the, com the official communications that we got from the institutions that I'm teaching. So, I, I still remember I met my lecture class on uh, Tuesday morning. And then I already remind them to, to prepare for the, uh, whatever happened for the, uh, what we call the rest of the semester because during that meeting, NYU already announced that they will be uh, re doing remote learning. And then we have a meeting with my team uh, on a grant uh, during that afternoon. And then he said, uh, one of the senior uh, members said there will be a communication that will come out. And by 4.18, okay, the uh, what we call the uh, head of uh, Pace University already told us that we're going to be remote learning. but with the intention of going back okay, on March 30, na hindi, na, hindi naman na nangyari. Okay? And that's the last time I, uh, what we call, uh, got to be with my office. Okay? And at the same week also, your college announced that distance learning naman. Pero pareho lang yan sila. Okay? So, when that happened, we don't really know what to do. So the question that we ask ourselves are, how are we going to transition during the middle of the semester? So imagine, 
in the middle of the semester. The good thing is the following week is semestral break for Pace University. And what the CUNY, where York belongs, did is they make the next week as what we call uh, suspension of classes and ask us to prepare for the so-called remote learning. So questions that we have in our mind during that time is how can we maintain the same engagement we have in a face-to-face -face environment once we go online? Are we ready for this mode of teaching? So how will the students react to this mode of teaching? And how are we going to uh, what we could do the laboratory class? So that's the uh, what we call main problem that we have. Paano na yung may mga lab? It's hard to do uh, remote or distance learning if you have a laboratory class, okay? And then during that time, because we're worried, so if you say we're going to do online teaching, are we going to prepare module, okay? Because there is what we call the e-learning or 100% online learning. And the best example there in the, our institution is the UPOU. Sila yung naggagawa talaga ng pinatawag nating online learning. But we were explained kung ano talaga yung gagawin namin. Kaya tinawag na remote learning sa PACE at saka distance learning sa your college. So we said, uh, they told us, you're just going to transfer the course content in an online environment. Okay? So ang mangyari, online lang ang environment, but it's still just uh, trying to mimic the face-to-face -face environment. And I think when I try to uh, look at the difference between the two, this uh, professor from uh, SUNY New Pulse uh, summarized between the difference between online learning and remote or distance learning that we did. Okay, because I know right now most of you are doing uh, your modules, your preparation. So for online learn learning, your intention is planado. But remote learning, it's emergent, crisis, okay? There's a one to two years development timeline in on online learning, but in the remote learning, it's ahora mismo, as soon as possible, immediately. The instructional development, uh, there's an intentional and guided materials in online learning. For remote learning, wala, haphazard, emergent. In online learning, the focus is online andra andragogy. So this is just the methods of uh, approaching the use in adult supervision and is directed toward self-actualization, gaining experience, and problem solving. Okay? So remote learning, we just want to finish whatever course that we have. And if you're going to look at the... I'm sorry for that. There's a reason for that later on. <laughs> so in the trainer uh, focus, there's the content and andragogy. In remote learning, it's just content and delivery. So sa online learning, meron kang best practices online. Okay? But in the remote learning, what you have there is best practices for crisis. At yung main difference nila dito, there's an engagement and attainment for online learning, for remote learning, attainment lang. And I think one, one difference that I can say about online learning is students has the flexibility. They have their own time as long as they submit their requirements at the given deadlines. Okay? Remote learning, on the other hand, we could say there's accountability. So there's a, what we call a organized structure that followed because we still stick to our original schedule. So they have to explain it to that. So we as a faculty will buy into the new method. And I think that should be done also to you, whatever mode of teaching that you're going to do. Because we have to sell also that concept to our students. Okay? So kung okay sa amin yun, pwede namin i-explain sa estudyante. So kapag hindi, may problema kami sa, sa estudyante namin kung paano kami mag-move forward. So th that explanation is really, for me, is acceptable. So th that's the first thing that we, we, we are asked to do. Understand what is the transition that uh, will happen. Okay? And then, we are asked to become techno genius. So we have LMS available and at least Pace University purchased Zoom. 
So I use Blackboard Collaborate already as our LMS. So what uh, happened is I maximized the use of Blackboard Collaborate during that time. We're also given the option if you have Google Meet or Microsoft Teams. And then we have this so-called uh, Respondents Lockdown. Okay. My wife, who is a New York uh, public school teacher, yeah, she used Google Meet with her student. For me, I use this too, depending on the conditions that I have. Okay, and I will explain that to you as we go on. I also asked help from my friends. So I talk, I, I, I uh, Facebook uh, all the IC colleagues that I have, IC Institute of Chemistry, UP Los Baños. So one of them, uh, Professor uh, Lansigan, will be your speaker next week. Okay, and through them, I was able to join a Facebook group that if you're a chemistry teacher, you can join also on that strategies for teaching chemistry online. Because to tell you frankly, the, the transition is not easy. Okay? It's not as just uh, what we call, okay, gawin lang natin yung ginagawa natin face-to-face -face, uh, online. A lot of teachers have a hard time in the transition. The, the, the old faculty who have a hard time with technology. Okay, so that's the thing that's uh, at least help us in the transition to this so-called uh, remote learning. And then during that time, since there's a break, a one week break, what I did is I contact my students since we have this blackboard. Okay, so I contact them and then I ask them as, uh, in, in the form of a survey. I asked them the following question. Do you have your computer? Do you have reliable access? Sad to say, kala nyo, US na to. Yung iba, may computer, right? Hindi lahat. Kung meron man, baka po, ano yun, may kahati sila doon sa household nila, nagagamit din yung computer na yun. Okay? So, I asked them uh, to tell me uh, frankly, kasi prank ka naman yung mga Amerikano eh, uh, do you have any concerns on this mode of teaching? And what are the things you are most worried about related to uh, especially to the class once we move to remote learning. So I just want to know, how do they feel? Because ko, if we go forward, ano tayo? Iisang bangka tayo. Okay? So we must at least row at the same direction. And I really uh, consider any inputs okay, that I got from them. Because that's the best way to move forward eh you have to take to consideration yung ibang participants doon sa environment mo. Okay? And these are some of the answers that really guide me how I'm going to prepare for the remote learning. Okay? So sabi doon, only minor concerns attributed to not being a in a classroom setting. I never learned online before in this way, so this will take adjusting to. On top of this, how will loves be conducted? So you see, they have the same concern as us teachers when we ship to remote learning. And then providing solutions to any problems on the slide that I will not understand the material and I will have no one to ask. Uh, uh, other uh, answers to the questions that they have here is I am worried, okay? To be uh, being able to ask questions in the classroom setting. It was nice during class to be able to ask you if something was confusing. Another one brought this organization factor because I think he had already an idea how the online learning uh, works and not being able to learn as well. So I take consideration on this uh, what we call survey. So I explained to them the mode of teaching that we have, okay, that this is how we're going to do it. If you have any concern, let me know. So there's, that's just a one-week period for me to prepare. Okay? So after getting the inputs, the, uh, these what we call students, so we decided this is the type of things that we're going to do. So maybe right now you're familiar with this word, synchronous and asynchronous. So synchronous is just like what's happening to us right now. It happens simultaneously. So... We are uh, what we could maintain the class schedule that we have. So we use that for a, a, a synchronous meeting. And I invest on my part, buying a, a writing pad and a microphone. So microphone, I'm going to record some uh, what we call the recorded slides. Okay. So synchronous, we meet 
as originally scheduled. Asynchronous, when we record the session of the class, I make them available just like today. Okay, if you're not here right now, okay, this uh, uh, session that we have will be recorded and posted in YouTube. So anybody who watch it there, they're doing it asynchronously. Kanya kanyang kayo yun. Okay? Now, in addition to that, I posted additional materials. Okay? I, rec I recorded this, uh, what we call problem solving. So in a PowerPoint, I put the problem and then uh, record voiceover how to solve the problem, just like I'm doing in the uh, lecture. Okay, because I don't want to do it by the click na lalabas na lang yung number. So I, I want to see, uh, I want them to see it as I write the solution to the problem. So yun yung tema nung ginawa namin at least for the rest of the spring semester. And to tell you frankly, between the two, okay, asynchronous versus asynchronous, if you have a 100% online courses, most of the session that you have there is asynchronous. You only have synchronous learning when you meet with your tutor, usually once a, once a month. Okay? Compare it to 100% face-to-face -face courses, which is almost everything is synchronous. And konti lang doon yung asynchronous pag nagpo-post ka ng assignment. So there's really a, a flip in the classroom. So flipping the classroom, that's another method that uh, being used uh, here, the young teaching approach. So when you say flipping the classroom, beforehand, binibigay mo na yung material para pagdating nila sa class, okay, alam na nila yung uh, pag-usapan. So I, I, I do it in my Gen Chem. I ask them to watch some videos in YouTube about course, uh, about the topic that we're going to discuss during a, a given session. So when they arrive in class, they're already familiar with the terms or words. Okay, so hindi yung first time na maririnig nila. Okay? So, I continue giving them more survey. When, when, when we did the exam, I want to get a feel, okay, on the results. I, I want to see if they buy in to the system that we have. So, I ask them question like, are the exam okay? How do you think is your score if this exam was taken in a face-to-face -face situation? And I always have an open-ended question like this. You, do you have any comments, suggestion, or reactions with regards to the exam that you have taken? Feel free to uh, give them so I can improve the setup that we have at this time. So, parang gusto ko matancha how they are feeling with the present situation. And at the same time, I want to prepare myself, okay? Kung kailangan kong baguhin yung sistema na ginagawa namin. So, ganun yung reason bakit na, nagagawa ako ng survey during the time. Okay? And these are the, uh, the, the answers that they have. Okay? Because most of them says no comment. I appreciate you being on Zoom to help answer our questions. So, most of the time, during okay, the exam, examination, I'm all available online. And if they have any problem... I asked them to uh, meet me in Zoom. And then from them, no comments. I thought it was the best exam that could have possibly been given the circumstance. I have no sub suggest uh, suggestion. I feel this is the best option for our current situation. So this only uh, what we call uh, give me an affirmation that they buy to the system that we have. Kasi mahirap yung pipilitin mo sila eh. That's why I always... Uh, take into consideration the input coming from the student. And I'm really thankful that both institutions okay, really guided their faculty during that time. They emphasize in the email the constant communications with the student. In one instance, uh, what happened is I have a student, I never he heard her for a month, and then all of a sudden, he, she emailed me, said, I don't have any, uh, like, computer, no internet. And then I said, it's fine. Okay? No. I just like you to know if, uh, I just like to know if you want to continue with our class. So, pinabigyan namin. Kasi, wala tayong magagawa eh. And, the administrators emphasize us to practice empathy. Okay? The ability to understand and, uh, share the feeling of another so we are asked to bear in mind that everyone is doing their best 
under an extraordinary set of circumstances. So we have to put ourselves in their situation. And the thing that they put during the uh, spring semester, they have this pass or fail option. So what does this mean? When the students get their letter grade, they have the option to apply for pass if they don't want the grade. So if they get a D there, they, they can apply for the option of pass. So what will happen to their GPA, the grade of P will show up. And in their average, okay, it will not be counted, but they will be credited for the course. So it never happened in my lifetime here. The students already know the grade and they still have the option for the pass or fail. And many students take advantage of that. Why? Because some of our students, okay, the relatives became victim of the pandemic. A colleague of mine told me that one of his students, both parents passed away due to COVID-19. So he, he, she asked me, what will I do? I said, just say condolence and be sorry, whatever we can do to support them. Okay? Because that's during the time that we are in peak. Now, if we're going to what we call do the class transition that we have here, so I do research, I have some students doing research, I suspended any research activities that I have. I think the lecture is the easiest one because of the LMS that we have, okay? Uh, we have the Blackboard. So it's easier to transform from the physical Blackboard to the computer Blackboard. Blackboard po yung name nung ano namin learning. Uh, management system. The, the, the problem is the lab. It's a little bit challenging and I, I'm going to discuss about that. Okay. I'm going to discuss each one problem, uh, each one transition that I have here. So in the research activity, as I told you, I have an active research. I have always one. Uh, when when uh, my colleague, uh, some of you students that you have, I always said one, but one means one team or one dozen. So this is my group, mostly undergraduate, uh, during the end of fall. This is the last activity that we have. That's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, March 7. So they, 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 they're, they're presented in a local meeting in our what we call school. And then this is how we met once pandemic came in. So we already have what we call become Zoom University, just like the other school. So what happened, I suspended all research activities, okay? Since classes were also suspended. So as of now, we can go back, but the university asked us to develop a plan how we'll do research. So I told myself to simplify everything. I'm not going to do research during this time unless some of the proposals that I submitted to NSF will be funded. I have no choice but to have some data. Okay, and then we canceled our presentation. There are 12 paper uh, posters that's supposed to be presented in March 20 in ACS that's held in Philadelphia. So they refund all the uh, registration that my students have. And we realized they continue it virtually, but only two students were able to present. And luckily, the three students who need to uh, graduate, they were able to finish their thesis. Okay, they have enough data to finish uh, uh, the, the thesis as requirements for their graduation. And at present, we don't do any physical research. What we do is P, uh, computational calculations using Gaussian and processing of whatever data that we have for paper. Okay. Now for the lecture class, so I told you we have I have two options. I use either Zoom or Blackboard. Now for class. For, for, for courses where the students have been my students before, we use Black, uh, Zoom because we want to see each other. If the students don't want to show their faces, I go to Blackboard. Okay, that's the option that I have. Okay, I held the synchronous class as I have told you as what is originally scheduled. I recorded the session and made them available. Okay. Because not all students were able to attend the class synchronously. And I also posted a further short slide for problem solving. Okay? So if ever they need a problem, 
or they want to meet uh, for office hour, we met in Zoom. Okay? Now, the challenge that we have here is how to make them engage. But the way that we look at it, the lack of engagement is often a lack of self-direction. So all you need to do is to entice them to attend class. So I, I, I give them uh, extra uh, quizzes. So uh, if ever we only have 10 quizzes that need to be graded, so I expand it to 20 quizzes and we just get the 10 highest quizzes. Okay. So during that time, this post came in, in the uh, uh, Facebook because almost all universities are known as uh, Zoom University. So this is from uh, Dr. Seuss poem, uh, one of the book of Dr. Seuss. They just modify it. I will teach you in a room. I will teach you now on Zoom. I will teach you in your house. I will teach you with a mouse. I will teach you here and there. I will teach you because I care. So just do your very best and do not worry about the rest. So as, as much as possible, we try to tell our students, okay, just to do the best that they can do. But if ever there are some problems that they need to attend to, okay, go uh, with that problem right away. Uh, the only thing is I, I ask them to let us know well ahead. Okay. So among the problem that we have, as, a, as I've told you, not all are attending classes. And the reason is some of them has to attend to the relatives who are sick. Okay. Assessment has been a problem. The assessment that we have is still the exam. But the problem with the exam is now open notes. And this becomes a problem. Check. It's a private company that specialize on answering questions. So during the time, any questions that you have in your test bank, they're available online. And it happened to me in one of my course, there's an exam uh, score inflation. From 57 in the first exam, their score just went to 82. And when I look at the question that I have, I was able to finish it. Okay, in five minutes by just looking the answer in the internet. So what I did, I modified my third and the fourth exam, and all of them are asking, uh, are saying, uh, your third exam is so hard. And then I told them, yeah, I know, it's so hard to find their answers in the internet. But that is sure, you were trained to answer your questions on your own and not to look for the answers in the internet. Okay. And we have the options for using the respondents lockdown. So this is a device okay, that was brought by our university that can monitor any students taking the exam. So it's a webcam device. Now, for the sake of privacy and also understanding the situation of my students, I didn't use it during the spring semester. Okay? But I use it this summer. So you have to pay for it. The university paid for it. So I said, yeah, let's use it. And we're going to use it this coming fall. Okay. Now, laboratory class. So this is, we could say, some of you are uh, the reason why you're here. So we have an option here. First option, we don't do labs. And I think some departments there in the uh, uh, friends of mine, I know they're not doing it. UP Manila Department of Biochemistry, they're not going to do the labs, any labs at this time. Okay? Another option, virtual labs or simulation. Another one, home-based experiment. And then the other option is the use of videos related to experiment. Now, what happened now with the shift to remote learning, the main objective of doing lab is just to make it a reinforcement to the concept that was discussed in the lecture, okay? So the, the, the objective that you do love to train your students for their skills is now done, okay? Although they said you can do it in the virtual lab, but I don't think the same skills that, uh, that you can get in doing uh, what we call titration in real lab compared to virtual labs. Ano yung gagamitin mo, yung mouse para titrate? 
So I don't think it's the same like that. And if you're going to be a doctor, do you want your doctor to be trained in a virtual lab than in a hands-on one? Okay. So there are virtual labs that are available for free for the rest of the spring semester during that time. But me being one of the senior, okay, in the department, I told my colleagues, the students are already having a hard time. And if we're going to ask them to do virtual labs, that's another adjustment on their part. So maybe we're asking the student too much if we're going to do that, okay? So we didn't do that. Although this, uh, what we call fall, two of my colleagues decided that we get this CHEM 101, which is just, I think, uh, $15 per students. So there are only three of us to decide it. So they already got two votes. So talo na ako. So I have to go with the majority. Okay? But there are virtual labs or simulations that are free. And I think the one that is commonly used here is this one. I think the most one that will be applicable to you, the pet simulation. So I just need to make sure I'll, I'll be able to share it to you. You share. So this is how the pet looks like. So if you're going to look at it, okay. It covers all the sciences. So it just PHET Colorado that Colorado that EDU. So it covers the, the other one. So I, I hope you see the, the the link. Okay. So it was useful to me during the transition. So this is just for the chemistry. Okay. And if you have a good internet uh, connection, you can use it. Now, the other one that I, uh, you can, uh, what we call apply. I'm just trying to find. Uh, the Open Science Laboratory, okay? It covers other what we call field, not only sciences, but the other uh, what we call uh, fields. The apps on physics, this is what we call for physics. So I don't know if you're able to see the, the link that you have there. So I'll try to open it also. Although you'll not be able to see the thing. So I'll try to show it to you. So I hope you're seeing now. So this is what you have there. So this is, it's just a friend of mine. Uh, I mean, a colleague of mine from C6 who showed it to me. Okay. So it's free also, just like the others. Now, lab exchange, this is a bio and we could say chemistry, biochemistry. <laughs> And then the Open Science Lab, I hopefully I try to see if we can share this one. So this is how the Open Science Lab laboratory looks like. So if you're going to look at this, there's astro astronomy, physics, environmental, bio, earth, okay, earth and environment. So it is also pre- So those are some links that you can use. If your internet line is good, they will be useful for you when you prepare your module. Okay? So these are the simulations that I use. So this is another what we call open educational sources. So it covers also almost all the fields, not only the sciences. It covers engineering, nursing, medicine, all the fields that you can do. Now, I use this one because I'm teaching instrumental methods and I, I use them, okay? And the students like it, especially since they, they don't have any, uh, what we could have on activity, that's the best or the closest thing that they can have. 
Now, you can also have what we call the home-based experiment. So based on the home-based experiment, there are commercially available lab kits in combination with household items that provide the means to conduct experiment at home on a smaller scale and without the need for expensive equipment. Okay. Now, you can also develop your own. The problem here is a safety issues. Okay. We can have legal liabilities here. The students can sue us. And some company who develop these kits don't want that liability. I tried to use it at the middle uh, uh, during the summer do, doing this experiment like this one. I asked some students to do experiment using soda and then try to relate uh, the concept that they observe in the experiment with the lessons that we have in the lecture. So this is one of them. And then I asked them to do this to evaporate the soda that they have there. Okay, I found how many sugar that they have. And then I asked them to mix uh, milk with soda and discuss the chemistry there. But because of this, when I asked them to do this, uh, what we call bleach with, with the soda, when the chair, when my chair knows about it, he wants to, he want me to suspend it. Okay, because, because of this thing, because you know, our president said you can use bleach to prevent COVID. So he said, you want that to happen and we will be sued for that thing. So what I do, I just ask the students to do it as extra credit. Okay? And then I ask them to do this thing here. But what I really want to do then, uh, there is at least have a hands-on experience because we don't do any lab. And I ask them some question in the form of the survey, and these are the inputs that they have. For the home-based experiment, I did make the connection of the type of the experiment we were doing to the materials learned in lecture and lab experiment. I also like that they were quick and easy. They still have a laboratory uh, experiments that they do virtually or, or online, okay? And then another student said, getting some of the materials right now, especially due to COVID prevented me from completing the home-based experiment. And then I think that home experiments were designed to be more simple as we could take a basic experiment and perhaps see a connection to the more complex labs while providing for an easier time of completion. But the best option that we adopted during the transition is the use of the so-called video-based experiment. Okay, why? Because me, I already use these videos in my class. When they assign me the off-season course, when I say off-season course, so these are general chemistry that is not taught in regular semester and what makes it worse we meet once a week during night time so i use videos before to at least keep them awake from uh, 5 30 to 8 30. and i did something out of it i was able to write a book chapter about it okay and then in analytical chemistry we videotape the experiments well ahead and this is the one that we're going to use when we go back this fall semester. Now, the main thing we do this uh, video experiment is to allow students to watch the experiments that they're going to do so they, they have an idea how to do it so that our pre-lab discussion will not concentrate on how the experiments will be done. And we can concentrate on training them the right techniques and develop the, the skills that they need. That's the main reason why we have that, uh, what we call the paper, okay? The school funded that uh, what we call videotaping. We did it around 2014, and since then we always survey the batch of the, the, the batch of students that are doing that. And because there's YouTube, there's a lot of videos that are available, and I was able to finish at least this summer the Gentem One while I'm teaching Gentem One during the summer. So we already have a video that is associated to the experiment that we're going to perform. The same thing with the instrumental. Uh, lab courses, okay? Although we're still hesitant because watching videos is different than doing hands-on uh, lab, but I found a paper where it says there, okay, results from a study that the lack of hands-on experience did not negatively affect the performance of the online students. So these are engineering students. So they, they, they uh, compare those that did 
uh, hands-on with the laboratory and those that watch the videos. And based on the final exams, there's no difference. And in their lab reports, the ones who just watch the videos are much better compared to the one who did hands-on. So that's where the studies is based on. Okay? And of course, I asked the reactions of the students. Okay? Because we want to make sure if it's effective or not. Because if it's effective, we're going to continue using it. If it's not, then we're going to find alternative. So these are the comments that I got. The videos were helpful because I got to see the experiment that I was writing up. Reading the experiment in the lab manual first set me up to understand the concepts. But watching the video made me feel as if I was the one doing the experiment myself. And yes, the use of videos are helpful to the lab, for the lab. Sometimes it's difficult to read the procedure. Seeing it done okay, is always helpful. And the videos do help me in the lab and I'll Google some other relevant and useful informations uh, and videos to help. So these are from the students. So my advice to you, if you're designing your lab experiment at this time, you ask these following questions. What do students need to learn from the lab courses? What is the most important thing that the students need to know in a given experiment? And the most important thing, how are you going to know if they learn? Okay, Because once you have that, you can follow these things that I learned when I take the online certification uh, session apply the backward design, begin the end concept. What does it mean? So you start what is your target end and then work from that. So if you want your student to learn a certain technique or a certain concept, so you start, I want my students to learn that. And then you work backward, okay? And you need to modify the learning outcomes. I remember in, in the instrumental, the learning outcomes that I have is to have uh, experience using instrument. So what I did now in the learning outcomes, to have experience in using instrument and learn the principle behind each instrument. Okay? And since the hands-on is out and the time to do the experiment is out, there should be a shift on the focus in the lab. So I focus more on data processing and analysis because I'm giving them already the data. Focus on interpretation, communication, especially the writing skills, okay, and use of imagination. So I ask them to design experiment after they learn several experiments. Okay, so how do the new normal looks like? Tell you frankly, this is what I have. Triple protection, two, two face masks and a face shield. We cannot be in this situation like before. So this is usually my gen chem lab and this is my analytical chemistry lab, but I don't think that will happen. So what will happen will be like this, okay? We have the physical distancing six feet apart and we have a 25% uh, accommodation or we could say capacity in our laboratory okay so we don't know what will happen in paper my school will go high flex hybrid flexible so it's a mode of a mix of face-to-face -face and online classes but the decision is always based on this guy and we are thankful for this guy because because of this guy we are where we are right now okay even if try lash him out in the White House to open, he's the only one who say go or no, okay? And at least there in the Philippines, your new normal would be what? Modular classroom or online, but I think classroom is already closed. So this is what I get from uh, some web page. So I think that it said face-to-face, -face, homeschool study, distance learning, blended learning. Chad announced flexible learning, but whatever the mode of teaching that you have, you have to buy it. You have to accept that mode of teaching because you have to sell them to your student. Okay? Because the way I do it is, this is the only way we can continue. So 
I, I'm giving you the same uh, thing that you happened to you. Okay. If you're developing the modules, we don't do the module. So I give you here another 5E, courtesy of my friend in University of Sambuanga or Universidad de Sambuanga. Okay, because I try to keep in contact with some of my friends and what's happening there. So I think all of you are in modules, right? So this is a different phase. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, evaluate. So this is different from the 5E from my first webinar. This is what we said, the, the one that guided him to prepare the module. Unfortunately, I, I don't have experience to do that. Okay. And I would suggest once you have the list of your students, connect with them as early as possible. Okay. You have to establish connection with your students as early as possible. Because I always believe that great teachers focus not on compliance, but on connections and relationships. Because I think I, can, I was able to move forward because I take into consideration their input. If you can do a survey, do a survey. Okay? Kasi mangyari yan, we are all together. Sabi ko nga sa'yo, iisang bangka tayo from the dawn. Okay? You have to explain to them why we have this present setup. So I could say coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. Working together is success from Henry Ford. Or as one activist, uh, Malcolm X says, when I replace with we, even the illness become wellness. Okay? I remember during that time, I kid my uh, students because they're fond of Harry Potter. So, folks, this dark and difficult time lie ahead. Soon we must face the choice between what is right and what is easy. So what is easy? You don't help class. But you're being paid. So that's not right. Okay? And I could say tough times don't last, but tough people do. Because to tell you frankly, by the end of the semester, I felt stressed out. I think that's the most stressful semester that I have in my life. And here at no work from home, you cannot distinguish work, you cannot distinguish home. And I tell you frankly, all of us are working from home. I'm teaching college, my wife is teaching uh, special ed, early education. My son is in high school doing remote learning and I have a, a, a pre-K daughter who is also doing remote learning. So imagine if our schedules are all the same. So no one can take care of the youngest. Okay? We're lucky we have enough size here. We have our own room. So everyone, if we have class, we are on our room. So we have our own personal space, but it's really stressed out. Okay? And we felt helpless. There's always a constant fear. We're always anxious. You hear this, uh, the, the, the ambulance earlier? You know how often it is during the time of the peak? Almost every minute. Ginagawa ko na lang, another one bites the dust. But that's it. I just pray that whoever is that uh, victim, he will make it. My zip code here, this is the highest incidence at least in Manhattan. But it's worse in Queens and Bronx. And to make sure, Usually, this is the time that I'm meeting with these Filipinos who are uh, graduate uh, students here in CUNY. We met every two weeks. They ask for it. I just try to make sure that they are okay. Because they don't also do, do uh, stay at home. But you know what happened when we read the uh, student evaluation at the end? We're so happy. Because the students see what we did. And I think we feel rewarded. But before that happened, it's just a constant worry especially if your students don't answer you, okay? So wh whether you're going to do uh, the module or not, you have to stay in constant communications with your student. You can use the social media. Facebook, I think, is much easier. Twitter, okay? Just make a connection because I believe the students right now, they will not buy the online thing. The online learning is designed for adult learners and students, especially the college one, okay? They need guidance. 
because they will not feel motivated that will they will not uh, what we call guided so all you need to do is maybe contact them every week oh kumusta na ginagawa mo ba yung module natin okay and when they do that they feel that something is watching over them so uh, that's the thing uh, one of the things that I, I advise you to when you prepare to the new normal so there's always a constant communication okay Stay in contact with your students by giving big feedbacks to their inputs. So if you have watched full hand look, what we got here is a failure to communicate. So you have to make sure you're in contact. For me, uh, my, my, my emails are open most of the time. And whenever they email something, I always go back, uh, email, I reply to them. And they put it in the evaluation. He always answered or replied to our email. Because that's the only way for us to move forward, establish a good relationship with them. They said a good relationship requires two constant, constant communication and constant sacrifice. Okay? Empathy. You have to be kind. So empathy is just feeling what they feel, seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. You have to put yourself in their own shoes. Paano pag may dinadaanan yung taong yan? Okay? Anong gagawin mo? Hahayaan nyo na lang? You have to take into consideration. That's why I think the last thing that I, 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 I like you to do is practice equity. I practice it even during the face, uh, normal face-to-face. -face. What, what more during the remote learning? Okay? You cannot treat everyone equally. So I focus more on those that need more help. Kaya minsan galit sa akin yung mga magagaling eh. <laughs> Bias daw ako dun sa mga mahihina. But I think magaling na sila eh. So ano pang mabibigay ka sa kanilang tulong compared to the one who need more help? Okay? So yung parang uh, take home message ko is there's no easy solution to our current setup. There's no one size fits all solution. It depends on the conditions that you have. And there is no wrong solution. As long as you see, you find ways to connect with your student and they find ways to do their lessons, I think you're good, okay? Students' goals will always take center stage at this time because we exist because of our students. Walang estudiante, walang teacher. It's as simple as that. And we always have to find positives in the current situation. Okay? Marami ng bad news na uh, nangyayari. Minsan ayaw ko nang manood. News from here and there, from the Philippines. But we always have to find positive in the situation. At least for me, I learned something that I think will be useful whenever we go back to the face-to-face -face, uh, mode of teaching. Okay? Tumaas yung enrollment namin sa sciences na naging major. So maybe so people realize in times of pandemic, the scientists are the one that will make it long. Okay? And also, I try, I'm able to connect with people uh, like you right now. I'm sharing whatever experience that I'm hopeful that you can uh, use to prepare for the new normal. And then, as I have told you, plan, 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 plan. Okay, we are asked to have what we call plan A to letter C. In the setup that we have right now, we have plan A. If it doesn't work, plan B. Okay, so that's what, what we do. And then you have to find ways to the high stakes assessment. So what are these high stakes assessment? The summative assessment. These are the exams. Unfortunately, in sciences, we base the grades of our students or whenever they learn or not on exams. So you have to find an alternative to that. Maybe you can use the formative assessment like the quiz. So what I tried this summer, instead of giving three long exams, I give them 10 chapter quizzes. Every chapter make quiz it Okay? Because what happened, at least in our part, it's a venue for cheating. Okay. 
And there's a disparity already. Yung mga mayayaman, post lang nila sa check, bayaran nila yung mag, magsasagot doon, tapos 100 na sila. But I always tell my students, kayo, bahala. I'm not going to what we call judge you on kung mag-cheat kayo or hindi. But come to think of it, if somebody see your transcript and they only notice that you have a high grade during the pandemic time, ha, that would be uh, on you, not on me. <laughs> and this one, mental issues is a real thing. I, I, I saw some students who, what we call, uh, really struggling during this time. Some of them are even good students during the face-to-face. -face. Even I, I think, uh, I, I struggle during that time. I'm just thankful. Usually when, when, when I struggle, I always go back to the Beatles. Okay, uh, do some things. I think the, the Netflix also uh, helpful during that time. And maybe to our high school teachers are watching, you can go to this webpage the, uh, or any one of you to help you what we call the prepare for the new normal. So this is by Ramil Buenaventura, an award-winning teacher, uh, mathematics high school, middle school teacher based here in New York City. So he had a lot of what we call videos there to help prepare those of uh, you uh, there in the Philippines. I also have my own web page here, Project Community. So I, I also give webinars to other uh, what we call organizations and schools. So if you, uh, some of them, once I get the ghost signal that I can post those recorded webinar, I'm going to post them here. And my last advice to you, since mahilig talaga ako sa Beatles, and I think that's the one that helped me uh, maintain my sanity. So usually every Friday, pag wala kaming meeting, nagja-jamming na lang ako mag -isa dito. So the tag of this talk is like, do you want to know a secret? Okay. And after this talk, I think you should say, I should have known better about teaching in this pandemic time. Yesterday is a very different, uh, what we call environment. Here, there, and everywhere, there is COVID-19. And it's going to be a long, long, long time. And during this time, we will have a long and winding road. But from me to you, before you get back, Hey, okay, your school, this, will, uh, this is what I can tell you. You're going to carry that weight. And sometimes you're going to say to yourself, I'm so tired and it's all too much. Okay? Sometimes it will be a hard day's night and other times it will be eight days a week. And you can tell the government, don't let me down. When it should be the right place, I, you never give me your money. Okay? But I want to tell you, you can always get a little help from your friends and some of them, and you could say you can work it out and you could say all together now, but some of them will not give you a reply. If you misery, let it be. Don't wait. Get some help. All you need is love. Okay. And you come together and it will going to be better. And in the end, the message that I can tell you to do is this. Because I always believe what goes around comes around. Or paliktad ba yun? Okay? So, maraming salamat sa Filipino Science Hub and everyone who attended the webinar. I hope you learned something that is worthwhile and can help you prepare for the new normal. Okay? Maraming salamat po. Moderator? Thank you very much, Sir Meng. So, this is a... Uh very warming um, seminar. Kahit ako, ang dami kong natutunan. Yeah. So, meron po bang gustong magtanong? Live question? May mga naka-raise po ng hand. So, tawagin ko po kayo. First off, Estelita Martin. Gusto niyo